Chapter 2, Quarantine. Think about the word quarantine. Think about what it means when someone has to quarantine and why they might have to quarantine. Cold face, Annie said, her teeth chattering. Yeah, yeah, said Jack. His breath billowed white into the sharp air. I feel like a fat brown bear, said Annie. Jack laughed. He and Annie were covered with fur from head to toe. They wore fur pants, fur mittens, knee-high fur boots, and long fur jackets with fur hoods. Welcome to Alaska, said Jack. He pulled up his hood and tied it tightly under his chin. Annie did the same. Then they looked out the window together. The treehouse had landed in one of a few trees at the edge of a snowy field. Beyond the field was a coastal town. The winter sun was setting over an ice-covered sea. I wonder why we're needed to save lives here, said Jack. Do you think something scary is about to happen, said Annie. Scary, said Jack. Like an earthquake or a volcano, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. He picked up their guide to the Alaskan Territory. He pulled off one of his fur mittens, opened the book, and read. About 12,000 years ago, people and their dogs crossed a land bridge over the Bering Sea from Russia into Alaska. When they reached Alaska, they became the first humans and dogs to live in North America. Cool, said Annie. I like the dog part. Jack kept reading. Until Russian explorers came to Alaska a few hundred years ago, only native Alaskan people lived there. For thousands of years, the native people survived by making use of the few resources of the rugged, ice-bound land. Wow, they must be tough people, said Annie. No kidding, said Jack. He read more. In the late 1800s, the United States purchased Alaska from Russia, and it became a territory of the U.S. That's why this guide is called the Territory of Alaska, said Jack. It's from 1925. That's before Alaska became a state. Got it, said Annie. Okay, let's go find some lives to save. Wait, said Jack, where's our magic? Check your pockets, said Annie. Annie pulled off her mittens, and they both reached into the big side pockets of their parkas. Got it, said Jack, as he pulled out the tiny gold box. Me too, said Annie. She held up the tiny stone box. Gold dust stardust, said Annie. One to save lives? one to make everyone forget that we saved lives. Yep, said Jack, let's not lose them. They tucked the boxes back into their pockets and put their mittens on. As Annie started down the treehouse ladder, Jack crammed the Alaska guide into another one of his pockets. Then he clumsily followed Annie down the rope ladder in his bulky clothes. As they started across the snow-covered field, their boots squeaked in the snow. Jack's throat hurt from breathing the dry, cold air. In the fading winter light, they crossed a bridge and walked along a frozen creek until, until they came to a boardwalk that ran along the ice-bound seashore. A sign said, Front Street. The town was empty. There were no old cars or wagons, only piles of ice and snow. As Jack and Annie tramped through the snow, they passed stores and saloons 
and restaurants with crooked signs and broken windows. They all looked abandoned. There were only a few shops that looked as if they were closed, but still might be in business. Gnome Pharmacy, Gnome Laundry, and Gnome Bakery. I guess we're in Gnome, said Annie. Good guess, said Jack. He took off one of his mittens, pulled out their Alaska guide, and found Gnome. He read, Around 1900, gold was found in Nome, a remote Alaskan town on the Bering Sea. More than 30,000 gold seekers rushed to the boom town, but within 10 years, Nome's gold rush was over and the town fell on hard times. The town was empty. There were no old cars or wagons, only piles of ice and snow. Hard times, no kidding, said Annie. Nome looks more like a ghost town than a boom town. Let's keep going, said Jack. He pulled his mitten back on and put their guide in his pocket. As he and Annie kept walking down the snow-covered boardwalk, they passed the Dream Movie Theater and the Golden Gate Hotel. Both had signs that said, Temporarily Closed. Finally, they came to a white two-story wooden building that looked like someone's house. They could see lights and people inside. The black sign above the front door said, Maynard Columbus Hospital. At least there are a few people in town, said Annie. But why is the hospital the only place that seems open, said Jack. Yeah, weird, said Annie. They walked down the boardwalk until they came to a schoolhouse with a sign that said, no school, quarantine. Uh-oh, said Jack. Quarantine, asked Annie. It means you're supposed to stay home so you won't spread a bad disease that's going around, said Jack. Maybe that's why everything is closed, said Annie. I wonder what the disease is. I don't know, said Jack, but if we go back to the hospital, we can ask someone there. In the twilight, Jack and Annie hurried up the boardwalk to the entrance of the small hospital. When they stepped through the front door, they found a cold waiting room filled with people bundled in fur parkas and boots. Some seemed quite ill, slumped down in their chairs with their eyes closed. Others looked disappointed when they saw Jack and Annie, as if they were waiting for someone else. Only one person stepped forward to greet them. A boy, about 14 or 15 years old, stared back at them with dark, questioning eyes. Who are you? he asked. Our names are Jack and Annie, said Annie. Are you sick with diphtheria, the boy said. Annie shook her head. No, we just arrived from the United States. Excuse me a second. She turned away from the boy and whispered to Jack. What's diphtheria exactly? It's a dangerous disease from the past. That must be what the quarantine is for, Jack whispered. We can't catch it. We had vaccines. Annie turned back to the boy. Do you have diphtheria? She asked gently. No, my sister and my mother do, he said. They are very sick in a bed upstairs. I'm waiting for the special medicine to arrive. Dr. Welsh says it will save their lives. Before the boy could say more, Jack heard a man shouting in, the, in a room down the hall. Hello, hello, can you hear me? 
the boy left the waiting room and hurried to an open doorway. Jack and Annie followed, and the three of them peeked into a doctor's office. Two people were anxiously watching a man talk on an old-fashioned black telephone. Yes, this is Mayor Maynard in Nome, the man shouted into the receiver. Has the musher arrived with the medicine package yet? As Mayor Maynard listened to the person on the other end of the line, Annie whispered to Jack, A musher is a person who drives a sled pulled by a team of dogs. I know, said Jack. That's a cool job, Annie whispered. No, listen to me, Mayor Maynard yelled into the phone. If Gunnar Kassen arrives at the roadhouse in Solomon, keep him there. Do not let him and his team move on. We can't risk losing the medicine. We're expecting a huge blizzard tonight sweeping down from the Arctic. A huge blizzard sweeping down from the Arctic? That's not good news, thought Jack. We cannot lose that medicine, said the mayor. Five have died already. There are at least 20 more cases, possibly 50. The Board of Health believes it is better to delay than to risk losing it all together. Tell Cassin to wait until further word. No, you can't delay it, the boy said, barging into the office. Gunner Cassin must keep going. The medicine has to get here soon. We don't have a choice, Oki, said the mayor, hanging up the phone. It's what the Board of Health has ordered. The boy turned to a large, rosy-cheeked woman. Nurse Morgan, please don't let them delay, he said. He sounded near tears. It's going to be all right, Oki, Nurse Morgan said, patting him on the shoulder. Please go back to the waiting room. Don't worry, said a gray-haired man in a white coat. I promise you, everyone is working night and day to fight this epidemic. Dr. Welch, my sister and mother need the medicine now, or they will die, said Oki. Even in a blizzard, I know Gunnar Kassen can keep running. You must leave us to do our work, said Dr. Welch. He gently took the boy by the arm and led him back into the hall, where Jack and Annie were waiting. Everything will be fine. Try to get some rest, son. We don't want you to get sick, too. Then Dr. Welsh stepped into the room with Mayor Maynard and Nurse Morgan and closed the door.